Well, hi everyone. Welcome to the Australian Formula One podcast. I'm Pep. I'm here with Max, mate, as ever. We are here. How are you? I'm great, mate. Good, mate. I'm good too. We are here for podcast number eleven, and there's been lots of things going on in Formula One, mate. There's been testing. There's been all sorts of things. So much going on. The season hasn't even started, but we're only two weeks away. Mate, we're fourteen days away. Can you imagine what's going to happen when the season actually starts? I mean, we're just. Loving all the car releases and testing and stuff now. When the season starts, it's going to be going crazy. No, it's great, mate. We can't wait. Uh, two weeks, bring it on. Can't wait. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone who's subscribed since our last podcast and also those who have sent uh, emails and comments and stuff. We really appreciate it. Thanks very much. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Keep, keep it coming, guys. Um, you're teaching us a lot as well. Mate, we've also had the tips. A few people have been seeing in their tips, which is awesome. They have, and there's been some interesting tips. Uh, we'd like a lot more uh, from you guys. Uh, but those that have uh, said in uh, their tips have been very interesting. And one of the things that we commented on, mate, when we were going through their tips, mm. was the prevalence of Felipe Massa yes. in the Ferrari. So, well, mate, interesting. We're going to talk about testing in a minute, but Massa's been doing well in testing. But yeah, there's been a few tips about Massa, and also I think someone tipped Spiker. Adrian Satil. They did. Mm. Now, I don't know whether that was tongue-in-cheek or not, but, um, well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, there's been testing at Bahrain. I think they did six days at Bahrain. They've ne never tested at Bahrain before, which is newsworthy, I suppose. Mm. Um, getting to know Bahrain a little bit better, the sand and things like that. Not one of my favourite circuits, I've got to uh, be honest. Mm. Um, I could equally group China in that. Uh, no offence to our Chinese listeners or anything. And um, Turkey. Turkey. Yeah, um, Triple Apex is good, but mm, the rest, rest of it, a bit boring. Mm. Yeah, the circuits themselves are pretty long. Uh, I find Bahrain pretty long. I, I, I find it difficult to get a rhythm uh, when, when I'm behind my F1 challenger of choice. <laughs> um, maybe that's probably why I don't like it particularly. Um, but yeah, I thought, I thought it was interesting to uh, to do a couple of days of, uh, of testing at Bahrain this year, mate. But um, First time in Bahrain and also they've been testing at Barcelona. 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 And uh, really it's been Williams uh, and Ferrari and BMW. I mean Rosberg was fastest a few days there, so... Mm. Uh, Which does raise the point, um, Pep and I were discussing earlier, yes. it was interesting to see Rosberg uh, either at the top of the timesheets or, or fairly close to the top on a few occasions. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the Williams is powered by uh, the Toyota, Toyota engine. Yes. Now I'm wondering if all of a sudden Toyota have got their aero sorted out because Toyota factory team is pretty well nowhere near the money at the moment, but they're driving or using the same power plant. So I think that's very interesting and it might be an idea to keep an eye on Williams. Well, mate, they've said for a while now that it would be embarrassing if uh, Williams beat the, the, you know, the A team, the factory team, and... Uh, no. Well, in testing so far, they've been doing it. Well, if the if the contract itself is uh, is, is set in stone, then uh, they have the same power plant as the works team, uh, and the the main gains will be made through uh, through aero and, uh, mm -hmm. and and team pit stops and the like, of course. Uh, but it'll be very interesting to see how they go. But all indications are that um, with uh, young uh, Rosberg, yeah, Rosberg Junior, uh, in his second year in Formula One, he's, uh, he's he's not doing too much wrong at the moment. Wouldn't that have been fantastic if Williams had a resurgence, a massive resurgence, just as Mark Webber left? I mean, that'd be fantastic if they could win races and things. Webber's gone, Rosberg's winning races, Alexander Burtz is winning races. That would be just sensational. I mean, good luck to Williams. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm looking forward to Burtz actually coming back into a, uh, into a racing seat this year. I think he's got a lot to prove. Yeah. Uh, an excellent tester uh, for McLaren in particular. A mm. uh, lot of knowledge, a uh, lot of skill. And at the end of the day, what's most important is that he is a quick driver. Yeah. Uh, and I think Nico Rosberg will learn a lot of uh, Alex Burtz this year. Uh, but I'd like to see Burtz up there or thereabouts. Well, mate. Talking about Weber, well not talking about Weber, but talking about Williams, Weber and Coulthard and Red Bull haven't been testing too well, so we, we wanted to mention that because obviously we're Australians and uh, we're concerned a little bit, aren't we, about Weber. I am, I'm concerned, I mean, yeah. testing's testing, but the guy is very slow, I mean the car is slow. Mm. Uh, Coulthard uh, has on occasion shown that he's, uh, he's been fairly quick in a few tests. Mm. Um, Mind you, he's the incumbent uh, RBR driver, mm. um, but I'd like to uh, I'd like to think Mark Webber can come back harder uh, than what he currently is. But uh, anyone who uh, who knows the Australian psyche and, and knows a little bit about 
little bit about Mark Webber knows that uh, the guys go. Yeah, this is probably a temporary uh, glitch, and uh, and Webber's a pure racer, and uh, and his main aim is to win races and eventually the world championship. Of course, that goes without saying. Yeah. Um, but at this uh, at this stage, I mean, it's his first year with the uh, with a new team and a new car and a new environment. Although some might argue. Could uh, they be foxing maps? That it's Jaguar rebranded. Uh, got to remember that was in 2003, 2004 that Mark last drove the Jaguar. Yeah. Um, but, but fingers crossed, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. I'll put, it, I'll put it to you like that. We're a little bit worried, but we're hoping they're foxing. We're just fingers crossed that they're foxing. But... Shadow, and shadow boxing. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bahrain, Barcelona, and that was supposed to be it, but then a few teams have announced that they're going to do some more testing. So we've got uh, Red Bull doing a couple of days at Manicur in France. And we've I like how you pronounce that. Manicur. Manicur. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Toyota at Jerez. So there's still a little bit more testing to go. I guess they're trying to iron out some bugs. I mean, Red Bull testing at Manicur, I mean... Yeah, it's a, to me it's a little bit of an odd circuit to test, but... Uh, from what Red Bull have, uh, have uh, admitted, uh, they're testing the aero package that they'll take uh, to Albert Park in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I would have figured that that should have been done and dusted by now, that should have been sorted out. Mm. Uh, but uh, if you believe Christian Horner, uh, this is already mapped out and it's uh, they, business as usual. They'd already planned to do this test, but it was all business as usual or something. Was that what they were saying? That's what Christian Horner was saying, uh, as anticipated. <laughs> uh, we'd be giving a menu core, and I'm like, strange circuit. And why, when official testing is effectively over now and teams are looking to pack their cars up and their teams 14 up... 14 days to go. ...and shift them over yeah. to Australia, would you be doing a test, a last-minute test, to get your aero worked out uh, for the first Grand Prix of the year, which is in two weeks' time? I found that a little bit surprising. But, again, that could be foxing. As Pep said, we, we never know. Personally, yeah, I don't think so. You never know. Actually, one thing was that uh, came out overnight that Super Guri are going to delay their car launch until Melbourne, and our friend Ant, my personal pick for Rookie of the Year, love the Ant, Max. Love the Ant, massive fan of the Ant. Ant's great, he's going to kick some ass this year. Let's hope so. But he's unconcerned, Max, he's just, he's chilled out. The fact that he's not going to get to drive the car pretty much at all before Albert Park, he's unconcerned. Either his PR skills have taken off exponentially in the last year, and he's got no qualms and no problems whatsoever, or he's quaking in his boots. I'm sorry, but two weeks out from the opening Grand Prix in your first full year as a fully fledged Formula One driver, I'm concerned. To turn around and say, well, the basically only testing uh, the car that I'm going to be contesting this championship in uh, is going to be uh, done at uh, qualifying and, uh, and, and warm ups at the opening Grand Prix. I, yeah. I find that a little bit, little bit daunting, uh, and he hasn't tested on the Bridgestones yet. New Bridgestones? What's that? What new Bridgestones? Yeah, well, I don't know. tyres? Do they mean anything? <laughs> Only a joke. Uh, but yeah, I found that a little bit of bravado from Ant, but yeah. uh, I'm hoping as the season progresses that he can, um, can show us what he's truly made. Is it bravado? Is it stupidity? Is it naivety? What is it? I mean, what is it about Ant? I think, Ant? I, think I think he's sort of doing or, or saying what is expected of him. It's his first seat and he doesn't want to jeopardise that by being negative. Yeah. I don't think this is really anything out of the ordinary yeah. uh, from a driver in his, uh, in his first year. You look at Nico Rosberg last year. Oh, I tend to take Williams up to the uh, to the top of the, the Grand Prix jury. And, and in Bahrain last year, he, no. you know, he, he, did, he did qualify seventh. Um, yes. But, uh, yeah, it's a it's a tough ask and I don't know that Ant sort of um, really believes what he's saying. But we'll see. Maybe we'll get to see that Super Guri in Melbourne. We'll get to see that, I guess, they'll, they've missed out on a PR opportunity. I mean, really, they could have had a launch. Even if it wasn't the exact car, they could have had a launch a couple of weeks early and had a good PR opportunity. They've just blown it. You mean the um, Super Guri Honda RA 107? Oh, yeah. sorry. I mean yeah. Super Guri With the Honda. spray job. That's, that's had the spray job. You didn't hear it here no. first. No. 